You know, I teach college kids for a living, so it's just great to be with adults. It really is. You, you look super, you know, and I, and I can relate to you better than I can my college students because we speak the same language. We're at the same age. We're at that stage of life where the term pulling an all-nighter pretty much means sleeping through the evening without having to get up to pee. So we're, these are our people. These are going to work. I, though I know I'm getting older, too. I know I'm getting older because uh, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching the TBS movie marathon, and they had the, the great movies of all time on. They had the movie The Graduate, and for the first time, Mrs. Robinson looked hot. And um, I, think that was a, I think that was a big sign. It's, uh, though I'm actually I'm looking forward to moving to one of those retirement communities out here in Arizona. It's gonna, you ever been to these places? The male-female ratio is terrific at these spots. They're really, uh, if you're a guy and you can drive at night, you're George Clooney. And um, so it's a, uh, jeez, it's, it's gonna be like high school with money. And um, but it's uh, yeah. <laughs> and you've lived like this before in college, right? Yeah, people living in close quarters, a lot of drugs. It's gonna be fine. But it's um, they um, let's see. I was uh, in Tucson earlier this morning. I uh, didn't mean to be in Tucson, but I had rented a Toyota and the pedal got stuck. So it's a uh, so we um. But we're, uh, it is nice to, nice to be here. Let's see. Let's see if these are working here. Uh, I'm pointing, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, I wanted to give you a little confidence in me. This is a stock picking contest where I went against one of the top financial minds in this country, Mike Ditka. And uh, I did beat the coach. That worked out okay. It's a... Uh, you know, the joke I always used to do, I used to be the investment instructor for the New Orleans Saints players for many years, and that was a, that was a real trip. These guys are just like you and me. They're nothing like you and me, really. They're, they're gigantic and really wealthy. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the, I can't use the joke I used to use, which is, why don't the Saints have a website? And that's because they've never been able to put together three Ws. And, um, but uh, now we're tremendous. I can't say that anymore at all. We're, where things have been great. I, I did hear a good one the other day when I was in the Midwest. The guy said to me, he said, what did Jesus say to the Cubs? And I said, what? And he says, listen, don't do anything till I get back. So it's, um, so it's, um, so the, uh, these things happen. Let's see. <laughs> Let's go over the facts. We're not entering another Great Depression. I've been managing money for 31 years. We're, I know this is going to be a big disappointment to Fox, but we're not entering... Another Great Depression. If you look at what happened in 1929 and the, the stock market crash and what followed in the Depression, the U.S. government is doing just the opposite as the government did in the 1930s. In other words, back in the 30s, they raised interest rates, they cut spending completely, they raised taxes. We're doing just the opposite. Unprecedented amounts of stimulus. Interest rates are basically at zero. Uh, you might like, not like Ben Bernanke, or you might like Ben Bernanke, but the truth of the matter is he is the nation's foremost scholar on the Great Depression. Uh, my class, we read the essays of the crash of 29. Uh, this guy was sort of born to do this position, so we'll have to see how it um, goes, but I'm pretty optimistic. Um, a typical recession. A typical recession averages about 14 months in length. This recession ended last summer. Uh, any day now, the crack U.S. government economists are going to come out and announce that. But it's, um, they, it's, uh, this recession was about 18 months, so it was a little bit longer. Uh, economic activity during a recession declines by about 2.5%. This was a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, off, probably about 3%. Uh, during a recession, unemployment rises by about 2%. Once again, this is a little bit higher. But one thing is true. Over the last two years, so many people have said to me, they've said, you know what? Uh, the four foremost dangerous words in finance. This time, it's different. And it's never different. It is never different. It's a repeat of, of the past all the time. So we see these same statistics rolling over in this cycle. Uh, I have a friend that lost his job. He always corrects me when I say that. He always says, I didn't lose my job. I know where my job is. You know, they, they just won't let me back in the building, you know. So it's, um, now when people lose a job in a recession, the average tenure unemployed is about six weeks. Uh, that's not forever. It's not good if it's you, but six weeks. I mean, that's about how long it takes to stay home and get really good at Guitar Hero. Uh, this, is, uh, this is not too bad. We, we've had two recessions in the last 25 years. Uh, the, the early 1990s and the dot-com bust of 2000, 2001. Uh, this, remember this? This is when everybody wanted to own stocks, particularly these internet dot-com companies. Remember, these were companies with no earnings, no cash flow, no assets. Who knew? And um, <laughs> thought that would have turned out better, really. They, um, 
And the media is, is, is media's making the country crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm watching Wolf Blitzer on the Situation Room, and even I'm getting nervous now, you know? And I, and I think to myself, damn, if my name was Wolf, I would not grow a beard. That would be the first thing I wouldn't do. That's, that seems wrong. They, um, yeah. <laughs> and you know, a recession is all in the way you spin it, right? If you're a banker, you go to somebody's house, you knock on the door, say, hey, we're here to foreclose. Well, those people are pretty angry. But the same thing, a banker goes to, the ba goes to a house and says, hey, you're going camping. You know, that's a lot, that's a lot more pleasant, really, you know, and um, they, uh, forever. And um, they, uh, the thing to remember is that the recessions always end and the economy always rises to a higher plateau. And one thing about every professional involved in any kind of uh, the finance side I've ever seen is that people have made their careers uh, really based on what they do during the downturns. And I think that's very, very important. Or as my old college roommate used to say, and I'll never forget this, he'd always say, Peter, remember, it's not premarital sex if you have no intention of getting married. That's what he'd say. And I'd, and got me through the tough years. And um, <laughs> I was almost late getting here today. I got pulled over three times by Arizona troopers wanting to see my papers. And um, I guess it was the black hair. I don't know. It was uh, unbelievable. They, uh, you know, we have our own problems. We have our own crazy politicians in Louisiana. Uh, one of them was uh, Edwin Edwards, our governor. I remember back many, many years ago, there was a scandal at the University of New Orleans. It was a sex for grades scandal. This is true. And, um, and Edwards was known as a real womanizer. And so he had a press conference that day. And one of the people asked him, what about that situation at the University of New Orleans? And Edwards said, you know, I thought about it and I've come up with a plan. I'm going to go to UNO. I'm going to teach English and I'm going to give A's till I can't stand it no more. So it's, um, so we've, uh, our politicians make Clinton look Amish, you know, so it's, uh, but it's, um, yeah. And by the way, you'll probably catch in the cadence of my speech, I'm not originally from Louisiana. I, uh, I uh, speak far too quickly to be from Louisiana. In Louisiana, this would be maybe a month's worth of material, but it's, um, <laughs> when you along with you, I said that's a joke, so that's your foghorn leghorn. That's a whole different thing. Um, they, um, I'm originally from Boston, and, uh, and uh, hey, I knew, I know it's a split in the crowd, and Hartford's kind of the DMZ, right, for the Yankees, Red Sox. Um, but uh, yeah, they, it's funny, when you're living in the Deep South and people find out you're from Boston, they always come up and say, Peter, will you please say that cute thing they say in Boston? Will you please say, park your car at Harvard Yard, you know? I always want to look at them and say, what are you, retarded? You know, it's just really the way we speak. It's, um, it's not a nice accent at all, really. So 